Okay, so um, I just, it just seems like, uh, back to when um, I showed the video about Sony, uh, um, when they released, when they uh, first showed uh, the PS4 after Microsoft showed first uh, look at the Xbox One, Sony went from like pro-consumer to anti-consumer, it seems. Something like that, because of the fact that they were getting rid of the PS3, the PS2, well, every, every PS2, but the PS3, the PSP, Vita, all those systems of their online services through their consoles and, and devices. So that's why, that's why it's a big um, backlash of what they were doing with this, with these servers, with the course play as well. They, they're spending all this money trying to save money, but they can't save the money because... You know they already spent it it's kind of weird i can't explain what they're trying to do but they're trying to do a hit and miss they're trying to say like, oh if we if we get rid of the psp the ps vita the ps3 online services we can save a bunch of money but then they're going to put that money towards the cross play lacking players in that cross play for the last several months due to the scalp on the ps5 so it's kind of like what to do with the matter so they they're playing hit and miss. They're playing give and take. So they can't they can't get away with the, the situation. Okay. Um, yeah. So like uh, that that's all I have to say basically is that Sony just seems like they went from the pro consumer console to the anti consumer console, um, and basically all because of greed. It's all about the give and take of greed. It's like they want to save money, but they got to spend the money. For the cross play, knowing that they're not making no money off of cross playing, so they rather they should have rather just kept the old shit on, which is the PSP, PS Vita, and the PS3. So, but you know they're, they're reversing the decision of the matter, so they wasted more money. So it's kind of like you know, what to do? <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. So uh, that's basically so that's. That's basically that, and the last, uh, the last thing we have tonight. Wow, we're, we've only gone an hour. Uh, the Evercade vs. Console. Have you heard about Evercade? Never heard of it. What is that? Basically, it's uh, they, they already released a portable console, and basically what they do is they, it's a cartridge-based console, where they, uh, where it's, um, all the games are like collections of other games. And now they're making a whole console version of it, which are going to take those cartridges. Okay. Um, I have the uh, list uh, right here. Um, I have the list of the uh, cartridges that they already have. Um, there's 22 cartridges. I think a couple, due to licensing issues, won't work on the home console like day one. But... Um, but I think, like, as they make more cartridges and as the home console grows, it's going to be, it's, you know, they're hoping to get the cartridges that can't work due to licensing issues yet to work eventually. This is basically all their, um, I'm going to go through all the uh, games they have, the 22 cartridges. Yeah. And I'm going to go through, like, the notable games that I, that I know of. Um... On each on each uh, cartridge, like just name off two or three that I recognize. If I remember, if I recognize that many, uh, they have Atari Collection One, which has games like Asteroids, Food Fight, um, Tempest, all from the most of the Atari Twenty Six Hundred games. A few of these are Seventy Eight Hundred games. Okay. Um, Namco Museum Collection One has games like Dig Dug. Pac-Man, uh, Xevious. Mappy. Yep. Data East Collection 1 has games like uh, Bad, Bad Dudes, Burger Time, um, Fighter's History, which just seemed like a generic fighting game when I played it on Super Nintendo. Mm. Um, Interplay Collection 1 has games like Battle Chess, Earthworm Jim, Clay Fighter, Atari Collection 2 has, again, Asteroids, but I think 
The first one was the 2600 version. This is the 7800 version. Centipede, um, Haunted House. Haunted House? You oh, still, wow, that's old. Yeah. Haunted House for, uh, let's see, 2600, yeah. On if, the Atari Collection 2. If I recall correctly, that that, that specific game, it was called, it's called like House Something. If, I, if it's the right one, I remember correctly, that was from the 1970s. The late 1970s, early 80s. Uh, no, games were not from... Um, Haunted House was based... Uh, I don't know. I never actually played it. Um, I I've only know what I've seen from the Angry Video Game Nerds videos. And like he did these videos on these games years ago, so... If I was the, um, if it's the right game, I saw a gameplay of this house game. Pretty much, you know, goes back for like the for the old like before Apple II, way before Apple II computer. So okay, uh, I don't think so because uh, again, these are Atari games that that I'm talking about. Um, okay, okay, sorry, I was thinking about home consoles, the the PC console, well, PC systems. Well, PC was kind of like. Uh, actually, PC did coexist with Atari, so. Oh yeah, that's that's what I was thinking of too. Yeah. <laughs> All right, uh, but anyway, like if I were to invest, if I was to get this console, I would get the Napville Museum Collection Two cartridge that has Galaga, um, Pack Attack. It's got Splatterhouse Two and Three for the Sega Genesis on it. Okay. So like. That's that's probably the one game I'd be interested in the most. Uh, Interplay Collection Two has Earthworm Jim Two, Clay Fighter Two. Um, that's the, those are the only ones I recognize. Mega Cat Studios Collection One. Um, I don't recognize any of the games on that one. Uh, 